Hi. Sorry for the bit of a late start. Life is crazy right now for me, as I'm sure it is for many of you. I hope everyone is keeping safe and maybe enjoying the time that you don't get to go out and making some music, because I'm sure seeing a lot of it out there, uh, which is at least some positive out of this whole situation in the world. But let's not talk about that, because there's enough crappy talk about that. So, today we're going to do, uh, I'm just calling it a one sample challenge. So there is a subreddit called Independent Ambient. If you haven't checked it out, you should. It's relatively new, uh, but the guy running it's quite active. Um, he's put together some uh, compilations of ambient stuff on his own YouTube channel that's featured some of my tracks, and it's quite active, which is nice. Uh, but he has a challenge for this week for all of us, which was to um, to make a track that's using a sample that he provides. Um, well, I shouldn't say he. He or she. I don't actually know. It's, to be fair, I have no idea. But anyway, um, I think the idea was simply to make a track that includes that sample, or that is inspired by that sample, but I decided what maybe I'd try to do here as an opportunity to, to get a little more hands-on time with the assimilator and with the morphogene uh, in particular is to do this as a one sample challenge. So I'm going to make this sound source for everything that we make for this little track. Let's see if we can finish it today. If not, I'll have to do some work on it uh, and then it'll get released um, later on this week. But we're going to make the only sound source for this be this sample. So we're going to do all sorts of crazy stuff with it and put a crazy effects on it and whatnot, but uh, no raw oscillators. I think I, I will allow myself to use resonators, like rings and things like that, but I can't just strum them. The initial sound has to be coming from this sample. What you can actually hear right now is already part of that. Um, so I've already I've done some pre-work for this because, as you probably know, if you work with samples, uh, it takes a bit of uh, finagling to get things in the way that you want it to. So uh, let's just mute things out for now. I'll talk about what these things are doing in a minute, but let me play you a sample here. I'm uh, just going to make sure that we've got enough volume so you can hear. So, this is... Cursor, where are you? There we go. Hopefully you'll be able to hear this. This... Um, this... is a sample. So yeah, hopefully you heard that. I think it came through, so. Um, it's a quite lovely, actually, little piano piece uh, that's in E minor at 100 BPM. So let's talk about what I did with this so far. So uh, I've set up a few different things. So number one was the morphogene. Um, let's see if my browser is showing the right window today. It is, okay, then I can, uh, Oh, I have the card loaded, and I was going to show you the settings on Morphogene, but um, basically all I did on Morphogene was I took that sample, and I inserted about four splice points. I did this manually in Reaper, um, because it's a pain in the ass to do it in Morphogene. Um, so if we turn Morphogene back on, let's turn all the Morph and stuff on. Sample challenge tonight. 
This will probably put you to sleep because this sample is really dreamy sounding. This is part of the sample right now. Hey, Dubofus. So you can hear as I just shift through. It doesn't quite sound the same as the original sample because I have the gene smoothing turned on so it instead of playing right into it you can hear uh, that each splice sort of like ramps in with like a with a sort of an envelope on it but I essentially have that whole sample in here and I've just mangled that or I've just put um, uh, splices in here then I set up morph um, with the new firmware that you've probably seen in one of my past streams, um, I set up the morph so that he, uh, it's running at uh, reversed down an octave, just plain reversed, and up a fifth. Yes, it did. Thank you very much for that. Um, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed uh, jamming with everyone. It's too bad I didn't get to play what I meant to play live, but yeah. Oh, thanks for the sub again, Jajora. <laughs> I'm actually on late a little bit. Uh, things are a little crazy here, so I started a little late. But, but yeah, we're doing a one sample challenge. Um, you can hear part of the sample right now. I just shift through all the genes. That's basically what the sample sounds like. It's not raw, I played that earlier, but um, that's the idea. Oh, you know why, Jajora? It's because uh, we had daylight savings time here, and so uh, we're all like back an hour in for everyone in the EU these days, so. two or three weeks or something like that, I think. And yeah, no problem for us, you know. That's half the reason I'm here. <laughs> so I need the same. So yeah, uh, but but for if you didn't catch this in the beginning, there's a subreddit uh, called Independent Ambient um, that had this challenge on it, which was basically take this sample and make a track based around it, but I'm going to try expanding it a little bit and make it so the only sound source I'm allowed to use here is, uh, is this sample. No worry, inverted popes. You can uh, you can catch up on this later, but it's good to see you. It's good to see you here. Yeah, there. You should definitely check out the independent ambient subreddit if you haven't. There is a lot of really really skilled um, and and completely independent or otherwise unknown people on there. There's there's one guy. I'll see if at the end of this I can find the link for. But he does fantastic ambient guitar, and he has like 60 subscribers on YouTube somehow. So I'll find his uh, I'll find his channel later. Um, but yeah. Okay, so this was the sample thing that we had going. Uh, as I was saying with Morphogene, I set up Morph uh, so that the chords that it picks with the new framework, or the um, the uh, the chord that it makes with the new framework or uh, new firmware installed is uh, down an octave, reversed, just plain reversed, and up a fifth. So if I crank the Morph. And it already starts to sound amazing as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> so I will probably end up modulating Organize or maybe even just triggering Shift or things like that. We'll have to see. Um, the one thing that I noticed is that listen, it sounds really bad when you use Slide. Oh, it's so clicky. So clicky. <laughs> All right, so the other half of what I had set up here is uh, in Assimilator. So I'm going to mute this for now so that we can hear all of what the Assimilator has in this right now. So the first thing I did was I took that sample and I used a um, thing called Paul Stretch. I don't know if you've heard of Paul Stretch before, but it's essentially a program you can run on your computer you feed a WAV file into it and it essentially does time stretching like you'd find on you know, like an Octatrack or whatever, but it does it to the extreme. 
So it took that, uh, it got it to take that, mm, I think it's a 20 something second sample and it stretched it out to three minutes long. <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> exactly. Uh, but you, but like you can stretch it out in the, in the normal stretch one, you can stretch it out to like 20 minutes. In the hyper stretch mode, you can stretch it out to like hours. It's ridiculous. So that sample that you already heard, um, this is what it turns it into. Let it play because it takes a bit. stretched out <laughs> you can hear the individual notes but it becomes more of a drone my plan with this is I might not use the whole thing but I plan on using this as some sort of droney bass I think yeah oh yeah P yeah it um, Paul stretch is total instant ambient it's kind of crazy <laughs> try if you ever try it try feeding some um, spoken word into it if you it, the settings are a little touchy when you use spoken word but it creates some really weird stuff but anyway that's the first sample thing that i got set up in there <laughs> yeah right um the other thing that i did was i just loaded the sample raw as it existed uh and this is into track three but i used um some zones so if we just go into channel three into the zones so i used a cool feature uh, that i hadn't used before in a simulator which is uh, uh called chop there's chop and explode in a simulator um you can use it both at a sample level or at a channel level and at a zone level the the one that i use which is chop basically so you tell it how many things do you want to chop it into and it looks for transients and automatically sets up the zones such that it plays that specific part of your sample and now it's it's all on one channel, which is really great. It doesn't. It's certainly not uh, perfect. If I'll, I'll press the button in a bit here, and you'll hear that not all the sample, not all of the cut points were necessarily great. But <laughs> when you're showing a new module in your unshrouded bus board, yeah, right, exactly. Chop. So the difference is that chop looks for transients and explode just like if you say explode into eight parts, it just divides the time by eight and takes time slices instead of looking for uh, transients. So, and then what I did at least for now was I set up. Uh, you probably can only barely see it. In, uh, the zones mode to advance, which means that every time I trigger that channel. It's going to advance through the zones and play each one of the uh, each one of the chopped pieces one by one. So it sounds like this. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And right now I actually have it tuned down a fifth as well. Oh right, and I have it running through clouds too because I was trying to use it as a resonator, but it didn't. Actually, it did work, right. This, oh, this was another thing I was experimenting with just before this. So I'm probably gonna like duplicate this setup or something like that because I found another cool thing with, with clouds and resonester mode. Yes, this would be a very good excuse for that. <laughs> yes, and yes, I have done my homework since the last time. <laughs> Had a chance to play with it more, all that kind of good stuff, so. But yeah, so this I think is a decent start um, to get something going here. There's going to be a bunch of effects that ends up going into it. I'm sure that I'll take the original sample and do a bunch of other pitching and stuff so that I can have as many tracks as possible out of the assimilator so that we can use it in different ways. Um, let me let me put in the morphogene and show you what I was doing with the clouds resonator too because I got this weird like overdrive effect that actually sounds really good so you leave this in and then you start playing this
So what I'm doing is I got the position up quite high and the, the gain up quite high. So it spikes into the red and it creates this nice uh, overdrive actually. Yeah, you're right, doesn't it? <laughs> and then if you modulate um, size a little bit, size in the resonator mode here control or uh, yes in resonator mode controls um, the chord that's being played but what it gives you is a nice little like sometimes when you're modulating it you get an interesting little pitch bend See that you hear that little thing? It sounds. It reminds me of um, uh, Anne Annie's work. Yeah, that's the sort of little weird little ditty that I wanted. Or that so I think that works really well. Like a passing whale. <laughs> yeah, true. Okay. So that's all that I had pre-prepped for this. Now we're going to see what else we can come up with. Um, let's first, let's, let's work with this morphogene thing first. Because I think morpho we're going to use morphogene as... Sort of like one drone and then that that Paul stretch sample is something some other drone so I want to modulate organize here first because that's or I don't know if I modulate organize If I modulate organize, then I can get a steady pattern, but I need to use like a sine wave or something like that. I could also just send triggers to shift and that would work just as well, I think. So let's, just for sake of simplicity for now, let's just send triggers to shift and we'll kind of see where that gets us. I'm gonna, I'm gonna set this up. Um, since the original sample was uh, 100 BPM, I'll set this thing up at 100 BPM too. I'm probably not going to lock it in by any means, but at least it will. Uh, at least it might might work a little better if we start playing anything rhythmic. Just patch those together, and then we'll also actually. Where's my? Sorry, I had to pull out all my cables here and prepping for this Oops. and drop everything on the floor and forgot to put them back together so clock. also Of some kind. Oh, longer cable into shift. Let's see what that sounds like. Actually, you know, I'm not, to me, listening to that, it's, it almost sounds like each one of these splices and the way that Morphogene plays with it is sort of like, I don't know, a phrase or a different part of the song, like something that I might want to progress through manually rather than at random points. Splice. I think I've got one, two, three, four splices, yeah. 
I might uh, do something from Vector at some point to have like a slow sequence that just sends a gate like every two bars or something like that to change it, but I, maybe I won't mess with that just yet. Because already as it is, it sounds good. I mean, it's got some reverb on it. I don't know that it needs anything uh, more necessarily. We might throw it through a crossfader at some point here. Um, but yeah, okay, let, let's, let's keep going with this. So we also had... Uh, a cloud sound, which was fine. Um, what we need for it is probably just a gate sequence, because we don't want to re-pitch anything from a simulator, at least just yet, not with Volt per Octave anyway, because it'll be confusing. This thing is in, the sample is in E minor, so you can't just like, if you play a C, you're going to get, uh, you know, if, if it was playing the E of E minor, you're going to get an E from the sample, right? So you kind of have to do a bit of mental juggling or be really good at music theory, which I'm not, to, uh, to re-pitch things like that. So we're going to start with just a gate sequence on this thing. Let's sum speed marbles up. And let's... Of stereo patch points here very quickly, I think, in this particular go around, but let's see. Let's steal these for a moment. thing. I found that if I take that size control too far to the left, it starts to really detune and sounds like crap. Yeah, that's definitely too fast. <laughs> it's kind of interesting, but... some of that fade, that shifting now yet. Yes, Luba. I'm, I'm very tempted by uh, its counterpart, the, uh, the R bar or whatever. But I don't have the rack space. Morphogene is, is interesting, but at the same time it's also... I haven't explored it enough, to really be fair. I really haven't explored it enough. Yeah, 
I do. Right here. <laughs> Yeah, Morphogene, as, as with many Make Noise modules, can be pretty esoteric. <laughs> it's sort of growing on me. I just, I don't... I don't really want this branching thing because what I want is an occasional gate, but not a burst of gates like it does sometimes here. Like I can try the red mode again. Red mode is like for designing drum patterns, so it's a little too regular. Oh, you mean for the uh, for the R bar? Yeah. Someone just needs to make like a micro version of it. <laughs> Maybe what we can do is use PAMs for this instead of marbles. It might be a little better suited to what we're trying to do. Um, just gonna go through my cable collection and find a good one. Okay, so we're gonna do PAMs instead. So if we do it like relatively regular, or on a relatively regular basis here, um, and we just add some random skip. Relatively high, like maybe 50%. Did I ever shove the Rainmaker in a palette or something to make uh, some rooms as it takes so much space. Yeah. yeah, you would be bad to go shopping with. Thank goodness I can't actually physically shop right now. Or really actually for for uh, modular stuff at all. There's no modular stores near me. Um, maybe. It all depends, right? I built this whole case with the in with the idea in mind that I I travel with it relatively frequently. So it's the, the most that I can get on carry-on between me and my wife is carrying these two cases. Otherwise, we get in trouble or have to check stuff, and I refuse to check thousands of dollars worth of music equipment. So, if that becomes not the case, which is possible, as we all know, then maybe I would expand. I don't know. My current expansion thoughts are mostly surrounding pedals, so... Like I really actually in my current in my current what I'm doing with my rack eventually plan, I actually get rid of the two HP verb and just replace it with a pedal, period. Just to free up some space. I'm really interested in the uh, at, at the show that I was performing at uh, last week or whenever it was, one of the guys there had uh, the Chase Bliss um, Bloom pedal. Holy cow, that is really cool. If you haven't looked that up, you should definitely check it out. It's really unique. And he did some really uh, interesting delay stuff with it, so... Okay, this is a little less frequent and a little random, and I like it. Uh, the Chase... Chase Bliss Bloom, I think it's called. Is it Bloom? No, it's not Bloom. Chase Bliss, what is it called? Not blooper, that's the one that's coming out. Um, shoot. I'll, I'll find it, hold on, I'll find it. Mood, that's what it's called, it's called Mood.
It's like, how do they describe it? It's a... Uh, It's a micro looper and delay, so it's like, yeah, weirdly granular, but also like kind of not. Yeah. All right, I like what we got here. Now, of course, the only problem is we are running out of stereo ins. So, um, we could send the assimilator drone into the mix-in, but then we have no volume control over it, which kind of sucks. We could drop a couple of these things into a crossfader. Actually, maybe that does make sense. If we dropped the assimilator, which is going to, the assimilator's um, mix out, which is gonna be a drone, and uh, the morphogenes uh, left and right outs, which are also gonna be a drone into a crossfader, that could work. It's. Um, we can kind of adjust the volume levels together that way. So, oops, cable in the wrong place. Let's see if we can get far enough here. Yep. to be a pain in the ass especially because now like I look at all these pedals and I'm like oh that looks so nice and then they're mono and I'm like I'm not buying two six hundred dollar pedals to be able to do this in stereo <laughs> so I think pedals are all gonna be like very early in the chain somehow or I'm just gonna have to like make mono signals and just deal with it <laughs> Okay, so one thing that I need to make sure actually is that... Oh, did they? I mean, I'm not surprised considering the prices, but... Uh, okay, so I need to go into the pan mix for channel 3. I need to make sure that uh, we are muted in the mix. because like there's so many cool effects you can do with stereo but then I guess it's also that like you play live and 95% of the time the PA that's set up is mono anyway right so Chase Bliss Maris what is this <laughs> what? It has automated faders? <sighs> yeah, that's gonna be crazy expensive. <sighs> yeah, okay, I gotta stop looking at this stuff. <laughs> That's crazy. I've never seen that on a guitar pedal or a pedal or anything in this space before. Like, 
how is that going to run off off like a typical it must like there's no way you're going to be able to plug that into like a you know like a, a guitar um, pedal like power bank because it's probably going to draw way more amperage than anything else uh, just to run the motors to move the uh, faders okay so we took three out of the mix that means we should have Okay, so I'm gonna take that first channel. We're gonna pitch it down. Let's try taking it down an octave. I can hear it conflicting, I think, with the uh, octave down reverse from Morphogene. Okay, only five of Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, it's just like a Strymon pedal. Okay, what about two semitones? Or not two semitones, two uh, octaves. Probably going to be low, too low. Filtering, like some resonance on it. Got some nice rumble. <laughs> okay, all right. And it doesn't conflict as much with uh, what Morphogene's playing anymore either, so that's good. Let's throw that through filter. Like I was gonna, like I was saying, they're not gonna burn the Q pass yet let's just use a squawk dirty we can still do stereo here and uh, really we just really all I want it for is to add some resonance to give it some oomph some weird ass filter mode in. Why? What is your reasoning for this? Uh, we're fully on the right side and cross fader. Panel's not muted. Signal path is correct. What am I doing wrong here? <laughs> yeah, I did. Nice. It is a nice little filter, except for when I apparently screw things up. 
Did I put ins and outs and outs and ins? No, I didn't. What the heck? Now there's definitely no signal. Interesting. There's signal coming out of this. Yes. What the hell? Oh, wait. I passed filters backwards from what I remembered. Okay, there we go. So, uh, manual, because I want a bandpass filter. Uh, You found anything particularly uh, cool that you like doing it with it, uh, to both of us? We're needing a band pass. Where is the list of filters? There it is. All right, it's the dimmed light on the third one. There. Yes, I ha I've known some other people that do ambient stuff sometimes that do like the idea of having a filter bank, but I'm not sure whether I want it. I would think so. I don't think band pass is going to be the right answer for this. It might be a low pass filter that I really want here. But maybe with Low pass gate. Try the MS20 uh, filter. <laughs> 20 elbow challenge. Actually, that is my plan for once I finish. Uh, once I finish this um, and get it released. Uh, I do plan on doing another stream where I'm going to do a one CV signal challenge where I'm going to do, and I haven't pinned down all the rules yet, but it's going to be like I take a sine wave LFO period and that is what has to create pretty much everything else. So I'm going to like molt it out 5,000 times and mangle the hell out of it and do a really cool trick that I found to uh, 
actually create gate sequences based on just an LFO and, um, and a logic uh, module, that's it. So yeah, that's gonna be really interesting. Haven't, like I said, I haven't nailed down the rules yet, but I'm, it's coming up for sure. Okay. I'm not sure how much I like that. Yeah, it's true. You that a cold Mac can do a hell of a lot with one signal. I don't have a huge number of like my plan with it is that I'd probably um the disting is going to get used as like a rectifier or something along those lines. I can use the uh, select as a logic module in places for it. Of course, I'll be like, I'll mult it out into a bunch of other things. The thing that I'm trying to decide is like, it feels like cheating to say, oh, well, I could just send a sine wave um, into a sample and hold and then like, uh, or like make gates out of it to use as a clock that goes into marbles to generate all these different signals. I think that feels like cheating. So I don't think I'm gonna do that, but I haven't like, like I said, I still need to like figure out exactly where the, where the line is, but I think it's a fun alternative to the three modules challenge. <laughs> okay, it sounds okay, but it's not, it's not really exactly what I envisioned. I want a beefier sound. Let's let's just try the cue pass. See if I can get it to do something different with maybe the smile pass output from cue pass. kind of interesting with 388. Yeah, I might get I might get to something rhythmic. I'm not 100% sure yet. I just want to get these these this morphogene plus a simulator drone thing down. talking about like this modulating that <laughs> yeah I almost definitely will if I stick with the Q pass here I don't think there's been a single time I've used the Q pass and not modulate the rotate things because they're amazing and yes I am staying safe and well isolated uh, thanks very much. I hope you are too, Alpha Stair. Thanks for coming by. We're doing a one sample challenge here. We got one piano sample that we're making all of the sounds with for this. <laughs> now nah, my city is about uh, what one and a half or one and three quarter million people, so not that isolated. <laughs> Okay, let's do like you said, and let's modulate uh, those two rotate outputs. Let's maybe try, because I haven't done this in a while, let's use marbles. We'll use it in the completely unquantized um, uh, step mode. Because usually, uh, usually I use marbles X side pretty much exclusively for pitch. 
but it's pretty rare that I actually use it for um, for like sort of rhythmic slash changing CV values. So let's take the opposing uh, X values out here and we'll just barely stretch the cable. I guess all the uh, snow and stuff uh, doesn't help things. <laughs> yeah, I don't doubt it, which is crazy. Yeah, right? Marbles is like... At first glance, it's I use it for only a few things, but like it actually is a lot more powerful than I even ex like even use it for most of the time. So. <laughs> it was minus twenty five degrees Celsius on the weekend here, and it's currently I think plus three. So. <laughs> Marbles has been the center of all your patches lately. Makes sense. What? Did you hear those little raindrop sounds? What the hell did that come from? That wasn't me. That was weird. <laughs> what if you can use marbles if you sample your sign? It's true, I guess I could send it into, yeah, the uh, sampled signal. That probably wouldn't be cheating, you're right, yeah. Just like using it as, using it as, in some way as a clock or something like that to just power another module to generate a whole bunch of other signals, that seems like cheating to me. And yeah, totally. I've seen so many people uh, making so much more music now, which is nice to see. Yeah, it is a random set. You are correct, you are correct. Okay, so I'm not entirely convinced by this. It's not, it's not quite what I want. I'm gonna try to repitch this again. I don't think pitch is the problem here. just be too low. Just put this back to here. Oh, why is that so scratchy? What the hell is that? You guys getting all those pops? I don't know where that's coming from. It should not be scratchy like that. Oh, you know what helps? If I plug cables in all the way so that that doesn't happen. <laughs> okay, back to what I was trying to do before I was troubleshooting scratching. Okay, so it, it was, but it was a little unexpected, that's all. It made an interesting pop when it was in the other one. I know, right? I kind of wish that your rack was banana cables. They're so much uh, more stable. Okay, so let's push this back down again. 
We were at minus 24 semitones. Still interesting pops. That might have just been the radiate controls, to be honest. Maybe it just needs... Oh, we can't volume boost things. Oh no, this is coming out on the mix, so we can... I think it's actually clipping. Yeah, it's clipping. That's interesting. Thanks to Bofus. Yeah, totally do. And um, yeah, like if you if you post it on there, send me a message. I would love to see it. So thanks for dropping by. And yeah, soft, soft Piano is what this original sample is, so I will definitely end up playing that sample at some point over this, but I, this is not, is not what I wanted out of this. I wanted a nice, really bassy thing, but it needs boosting somewhere, but it's not really, not really doing what I want. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> works out, eh? Like here, if you... This is the original sample, just spliced a bit. bass in that, at least it sounds to my headphones like there is, but well actually maybe maybe you're right. Yeah, it might just be mud that I'm hearing and not actual bass. <laughs> so, I don't know, what can I, what can I do with this? So, let me pitch it back up, of course. Problem is, as soon as you start doing that, it definitely directly conflicts with or doesn't add anything to the morphogene. Um... What else could we do with this? Could we perhaps um, take it in mono and use it as an exciter to rings? Maybe? Might result in something interesting. Might not pick up anything also, but. This might conflict a little bit with what we were... I 
obviously we we then have to um, sequence rings. But I love this sound with the the overdrive through the resonator is so cool. Right? Yeah, I know. I love it. me of a uh, of like a slide a guitar slide okay but I think maybe we'll just try this by just sending a quick um, set of pitches to this could be we just need to mess with this some more an E minor because that's what the maybe <laughs> how does this work sample. I'm like, where is it gone? It got lost in everything. Sample has stopped playing. Interesting experiment, but that's not it. Okay. Other things we could do, we could pitch it up. See what that actually sounds like. I could maybe use it as an FM source. I mean, I can also do that inside of the assimilator here too, right? So let's just balance these on the axis and let's take, actually, let's drop it for a moment and we'll
Okay, with some effects, that could work. Oh, that sounds like a choir. Oh. Damn, that's good. Okay, yeah, that was the answer. That was the answer. Needs some, needs some cleaning up, but that was definitely the answer. Yeah, this is also, you probably missed the beginning of this, Shizura, but so the two things that I have going on the assimilator here, the one that's making that crazy like guitar overdrive thing is I took the sample and I, and I used that, that chop thing you're talking about. The first one that's in there is Paul Stretch. Oh no, you were here for that. Yeah, you, you saw that. So the, the crazy choir thing is just the 20-ish second piano sample stretched to like two and a half or three minutes. Yeah, other than the resonation from clouds and reverb, all of this is that piano sample, which is crazy actually. <laughs> something with it so let's try key pass first let's take the smile pass because that's always a good bet So what we could try is taking that out in mono, let's, and then we'll send it through the Q-Pass. The Q-Pass can make it uh, very stereo with the with the um, rotate control. So let's see. Simulator level that it's clipping. Um, man. Yeah, checking the signal chain is definitely not.
might actually be the oxen that's clipping. discovered how much I like Lo-Fi Junkies Square Wave on the last uh, uh, the last live set that I did. That actually works really well if you click it into the Square Wave every so often to give like a weird broken vinyl effect. It kind of matches with that little whale bit. has a built-in square wave so it basically the modulation that it's applying is just on off on off on off I can send my own external wave into it too but If I could put together something, if I could put together something, um, yeah, like I could use my maze here. I could send a s well. Actually, I could even just use the select to do it. I could send a square wave into one side and a sine wave into the other side, and then um, CV control when it flops between the two. We'll see if I get to that point or whether I just decide to flick it <laughs> myself. setting that up. Let's try setting it up just for a, just for a patching exercise at the very least. So Just use the bottom thing of select. We'll go into the external wave input. And so we want to send a sign into one side and a square into the other, so we can just use um, PAMs. So there's a sign on three and a square on four already. Uh, we just need to make sure that they're not skipping or anything like that. This one's good. Oh, this one has some Euclidean steps in it. We'll just not do that. Cool. Okay. I need to go a little bit slower from what I see to get this quite the same effect, so... Square is going to be on 
the red side of select, the B side, and sign will be on the other side. So let's see if this works first. We're just going to mute everything else. Yeah, with the CSL in the but actually, I've been doing some planning and I think that I might be replacing the CSL because I feel like I don't... I don't use it for all its capabilities. I'm thinking about maybe getting an Odessa because the Odessa, uh, the Chaos Odessa plus its expander is polyphonic, which is very, very interesting. And it seems to make some really nice, like bellish harmonic sounds. It's just what I use like 99% of the time for what I do. So yeah, I don't use it very often. Uh, yeah, it might, I don't know. I don't know my terminology. <laughs> all I know is that you can at least control all the oscillators individually with individual, not with individual triggers, but with individual volt per octaves, right? Which I think is what makes it paraphonic. Is that right? I don't remember. You tried it out at control. So how did you find it um, to... Uh, like, was it relatively intuitive or and like have sweet spots in it or in like some stuff that sounds like garbage or did it just like, was it not hard to get good stuff out of it? Oh, really? <laughs> okay, so you can hear it's not, this is the square way. So this is the sign. And this is the square. It's not quite the same. Like, contrast that. Ah. It's a little clicky, it's a little too fast, so let's just turn it down to 1.3. Load of speed pause, excellent. Yeah, that's most likely next on my list. We'll see. I'm in a position now where I have to I have to sell stuff to buy more stuff now, so <laughs> we'll see. Peter Blaster's modules, I don't think I'm familiar with that. E three five two. I've never even heard of that. Electrical engineering three five two. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. I've I don't know much of anything about that, but I've I recognize that Seat Lombard thing. What what is the? Oh the E five five. Yeah yeah yeah. That thing is like, isn't it basically like almost 84 HP wide? <laughs> it's huge! Oh, maybe I'm thinking of something else. Yeah, okay, that's what I'm thinking of. That's the, that's the one with like like four or like six or seven rows of oscilla or of uh, knobs right and then the screen. Yeah. Yeah, so it's weird with this lo fi junkie that the built in square wave really doesn't sound as square as this one does, because this is clicky. It's a square wave. This is also supposedly a square wave, but it sounds much better. Maybe I need to, maybe if I slew this just a little bit. Not enough to make it into a triangle, but just to like cut off the end of it. Maybe that will do it. See. 
Ja gut. Still a little bit fat. Let's just try to do it again. Yeah, I would assume it's an analog square. You're right. Versus Pam's would def definitely be a digital square. But you are right. I think that it slewing it gets you pretty close. Let's turn this back on. So, I mean, basically all I did for now was move the switch, but that gives me CV control if I wanted to. X is a little too slow. 1.3 X seems a little fast. switching it. It just sounds better. It's a good patching exercise, though. Now, we were going to see... Now, we already have the rotate controls going on this that was coming through Q-Pass. is having, if any, is really subtle. Well, I can hear it moving radiate only because I have the resonance way up, which I don't really necessarily want. I don't want this to be too screechy. Don't even do this in stereo at all. What does it sound like in mono? Mm, it's too. It doesn't have the stereo spread, which actually is not nice for that. It's much better this way. Just not. Maybe we'll try. Um, the high pass is probably going to be not useful here. That's not bad. There's a little bit of of the resonance moving from the radiate controls, but not too much. I 
actually the high pass is, feels like it's cut out a little bit. That's giving it more space with the morphogene. So that's good. Cool, all right, I'm pretty happy with that. Plus this. Okay, so what else can we do with this piano sample? So we got some more channels. I don't know, for the sake of argument, since you wanted to hear just the sample, what happens if we just play the sample over top of this? I have no idea what that'll sound like. It'd be funny if it's amazing. <laughs> Probably gonna play out of time to do this to start, but we'll see. Yeah, it could be a good beginning to this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fair enough. Yeah, right there is where it starts to get a little funny. <laughs> I'm not really sure, honestly, that I actually want to use the sample raw, just played as it is, because that seems like a little bit of cheating. <laughs> Also, just like duplicate what I did with the last channel and and chop it into zones and then play it as in whatever way I want. But <laughs> I think I think that's what I'm gonna do. Um, so we're gonna go zones. And we're gonna double tap and we're gonna say chop into four pieces. Boom. Let's see what we got out of that. Turn off looping. Just quiet everything else for a sec. I took out all the sequencing fun. <laughs> all right, we'll put it in advance mode. So this means we've now cut a bar, essentially. Oh, almost. Oh, it didn't quite work, actually. So, uh, crap, let's... That's un... Is there a way to undo that? Uh, maybe I... No, that's copy zone. I know there's a way to delete the zones. Delete. Delete. 
delete, delete. Uh, okay. Oh, we got a broken channel thing now. I'm not sure how I fix that. Uh, let's just repick the sample and maybe that'll do it. Okay, let's break it into three instead. That seemed to like it might work better. Um, uh, double tap, chop into three. Okay, what do we got now? Uh, what? No, I didn't do so well either. Why is it playing the whole sample back? What's going on here? Hang on a sec. Channel five. Tones are set. job of choosing zones is the answer to that. Okay. Uh, delete everything again. I didn't look and see, because I know for Morphogene it's nice because you can go into Reaper and set up the splice points, but I don't know that you can do that with a simulator. Oops. Uh, okay, back to the sample. Let's do something more then. We'll uh, chop it into much more. How about chop it into eight? I think that's maybe what I did in the last channel. Some of the chops are bad for sure. Do advanced mode. to also definitely be set to smooth. Okay, it's something. Let's put it through Rainmaker. That makes everything better. <laughs> Turn on everything else again. Of course, Rainmaker might have to come out in mono. <laughs> Don't have anything left, but it might not be the end of the world. Just to get channel six for him. Five, six.
reverse could be good. Reverse is clicky with Rainmaker, but it might not be that bad here. I'll just surf a few more presets and see. like a helicopter. Called takeoff, makes sense. <laughs> Not that. This one's always crazy. Comb filter. song. Let's use this one. It fits with everything else. <laughs> Let's not. to make a drone. Sounds too out of tone. Out of tune, I should say. 
<laughs> That's called film noir. Sounds like it. <laughs> Wasn't so clicky that one might be good, but. It's maybe a little clicky. play this in reverse too. does sound pretty good. things like we could of course go and just like load up 
load it up one more time and just adjust its uh, envelope. Uh, well, not its envelope, its sample end. of this. I'm not the best at making percussion, as you might imagine, given that I work in ambient. <laughs> She only applies to the first play, or the like the ending doesn't apply to each loop, so. Hmm. Right, yeah, it could be a good learning experience to do. Percussion challenge for sure. Hmm. Could throw it through a VCA. Let's do that real quick in the last few minutes of this. Uh, through ABCA, whose CV value will be coming from stages on a very, very, very short envelope. Uh, just gate it with cheat and use the gate from planar. So we're gonna put it on one shot, go. Oh, right. Have to have the VCA output somewhere, it would be helpful. Sort of get something out of it. All 
All right, what does that sound like in context? I have no idea what I actually do for a pattern here, but. something I work on later. It's about time for me to get out of here. Uh, so, before I do that, I better save everything before I forget inevitably. That worked out very well, I think. Yeah, yikes. Yeah, you better get out of here. All right. Thanks for dropping by, Jezora, and thanks again for the uh, for the sub. It's appreciated. Uh, so yeah, I think that I will probably finish this one off on my own so that I can get it out in time for the little weekend challenge thing here. But hopefully Saturday is when I plan on doing that one CV source challenge. So we're gonna see how that goes. That might be real interesting. At the very least, it's gonna be a lot of cool info on how to use modules to do weird things you normally wouldn't do with CV. <laughs> so, uh, I hope everyone has a good uh, few days, stay safe, uh, and I'll see some of you on Saturday. Uh, let's see who we got around, if there is anyone around. Actually, I guess if you're taking off, you're the only other one watching, so we'll just leave it at that. Okay, cheers. See you, everyone.